Hey, good morning. It's John Edelson coming to you live from my garage in Laguna Niguel, California for the 530 Drive. This is episode number 106. Man, I'm getting up there. So this is about accumulated advantage. If you don't know what that is, I'm going to explain it because I didn't really understand the concept until the uh, last couple days. I've been learning a little more about it. Let's take junk food, for example. Everybody knows the pain. Good morning, Steve Peterson. Everybody knows the, the, the junk food's bad for you and the knows the dangers of it. And why can some people want, some people can say no and some can't. Some are just, are some stronger, or some weaker? What is it? You know, I, I think it's pain and pleasure. People in better shape have better habits and they've worked hard to get there. Um, for example, if you're in really good shape and someone says, hey, give me, you want a piece of that pizza? You know, no, I don't eat that because you've worked too hard to get where you're at. For me, as soon as you want a piece of pizza? Yeah, fuck it, I'm fat anyway. I'll have a piece of pizza. <laughs> so... And I've been on both sides of this. People that don't know me, in high school, I, I pretty much stayed under 5% body fat all the time. I wrestled year-round. I was always cutting weight for wrestling. So there would be a lot of times where I said, oh, I can't eat that. Nope, I don't eat that. That's not my diet. I don't eat that. And then I got to the point where I was 285 pounds. I'm like, fuck, I eat that. I drink that. I eat everything. I don't care. I'm fat anyway. Who cares? So this is called accumulated advantage. And what happens is the people that, that are healthier... And people are unhealthy. The gap starts to widen. The more healthy they get, the more they feel better, the more they say, I don't eat that. And uh, let me show you a different example. Let me talk about like reading. Let's say two kids, the same same ability, same intelligence. One, one kindergartner has a little better sleep habits, a little better diet, and started reading about two months before the other kids, okay? At school, even the kids with the genetic advantage that are a little smarter, can't widen that gap. They can't catch up because here's what happens. The accumulated advantage starts to grow and children know whether they're good or whether they're not good, whether they're great readers or not good readers. Okay. So what, and then the top students, the ones that came in with a little bit of an advantage, <clears throat> a little bit better diet, a little bit more sleep, a little bit of learning in advance, they come in and they get more opportunity. The teachers praise them and say, Hey, you're a great reader. You're doing such a great job. The other kids might not get that as much, right? Because they're not a great reader, not doing it as quite as well. So it starts to create this pain anchor with kids that aren't good readers. They start to say, oh, I'm not a good reader. And the ones that are good readers get more opportunity. They get to read aloud. They get more praise. And they get the positive anchor. So they're more excited. They can't wait till reading time because I'm a star at reading time. They're like, fuck, man, I don't want to read today because this sucks. Even in kindergarten, I feel like an idiot because everybody else is so far ahead of me. And this gap starts to widen, okay? So and then they start doing this ability grouping. Like, okay, let's put all the all this group over here and this group over here. So the teachers, you know, they're telling these kids, you guys are the good readers, so you're going to do great. They don't tell the other kids, you guys are the bad readers, so get used to it. But you know what happens? At recess, they find out, hey, we're the good readers. Like, shit, I'm in the bad reading group. How'd that happen? So it reinforces that pain of being a bad reader and they said, and then, then they try to avoid that more often. So, okay, we're doing practice reading. These kids are the ones drawing, writing stuff, doing pictures because they have a pain associated with reading. Where the other kids have the pleasure of being the best. I'm a really good reader. I can't wait to get in the reading. So this is how this increases the skill gap. And this is, we're talking about kindergartners and reading. And, and the more the ability grouping, the more this happens, even subconsciously, these kids start to separate. And some get stronger and some get weaker. And this is just reading. This translates into every part of life. Like I talked about before, the diet. People that are healthy and in good shape and have worked out all their life. And they just don't eat that shit. I don't eat that. And people that are fat, like, fuck it. I'm already fat. I'll eat that pizza. I don't care. So that gap starts to widen. The healthy get healthier. The fat get fatter. And like I said, I know from experience because I've been the super healthy wrestler. And I've also been 285 pounds. My senior in high school wrestled 138. I've doubled my weight since I was here in high school. A little crazy, right? But here's the, here's the whole point. If you understand this concept, you can manage it. You don't get discouraged. You know, people are like, oh, I'm not good at that. I'm not going to do it. I can't run on the treadmill. Then walk on the treadmill. I can't ride a bike that long. I can't, I can't even do a push-up. So I'm just not going to do it. You know, understand this concept and why people are so much, you know, at a higher level than you may be and how to get to that level. It won't take that much to catch up, as long as you put it in your mind that I can do this, I can get stronger. Good morning, Sammy Henson. Speaking of great wrestlers, how are you, sir? Jody Connolly, good morning. So that's it. That's what I'm telling you. Just 
Understand this concept of accumulated advantage and try to narrow that gap if you're on the bottom. If you're on the top, keep doing what you're doing. But what I'm saying is narrow that gap. Realize you can do things. You are strong enough. You are smart enough. You can read. You can do a push-up. You can walk on the treadmill. You know you can get out there and do great things. So don't get discouraged if somebody's better than you at something. Try to close that gap. That's all for today. I just want to talk about accumulated advantage. Hope everybody has an awesome day. You're awesome. And always remember, I love you, and I'll see you tomorrow morning at 530. Bye, guys.